is up, everyone? It's Kanan. It's Jesse. And we're the Geeky Saying Couple, and welcome back to another Ruby Fairy Tales reaction. This episode is The Shallow Sea. I'm actually excited for this one because, well, I know what this one is about. I don't remember if I told you what it's about. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a long time since I've read the book, but I do remember this one because it... Well, I'm not going to get to it until we actually watch it. But once again, it is from the very... Well... <laughs> I almost killed you with the book. The R Ruby Fairy Tales of Remnant book. Very, very good read. Even though I've still... Like, like this book's been out for over a year, I think. now, And I've still not fully finished it. I'm a slow reader. You can ask her that. She's the one that gets through books within a day. I will usually read a little bit and then put it down and not touch it for months and then go back and be like... Whereas I can pick up a book and read the same book about six times in the time it takes him to pick it back up. Yeah, and I'm like, wait, where was I again? Then I end up just rereading what I've already read. Um, so, I don't know about you, because we haven't really talked about it off camera a lot... I've kind of enjoyed these so far. It's no Ruby Volume 9, but at least it is something while we wait for news for Volume 9, the Volume 8 soundtrack, Arrow Fail. I'm still waiting on my collector's edition of Ruby Grim Eclipse on the Switch. So, you know, hopefully we hopefully they toss us a bone soon <laughs> i have enjoyed them and i also like that like it's not one same art and animation style like yeah. we've seen the differences in them and yeah it's i like... like that because it's different it's just it's a, like a fairy tale like i remember some of the stuff that i used to watch like God, going back to, like, Reading Rainbow and Wishbone and things oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. It, each story was different, and they had different, like, especially Reading Rainbow. Some of them were, like, the moving ones like we mm -hmm. saw. Yeah. Or some of them, they were actually physically animated. So it was, it kind of reminds me of that, and I, that was something I really enjoyed as a kid. Funny story about Reading Rainbow. I remember one time there was an episode where they covered Rumpelstiltskin. Yes, I remember that one. That's That terrified me as a kid. It was quite terrifying. <laughs> it was creepy. And then you had um, Britannica, Tales from Around the World. That show gave me such childhood trauma. We watched some of that stuff in school. Like, <laughs> if you've never seen it, it's on YouTube. Just type in Britannica, Tales from Around the World. The Woodcutter's Sister. That... That thing gave me nightmares as a kid. The only one that didn't really freak me out in any way was Rumpelstiltskin, which you can ask her. I drove her nuts when I found that on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so weird. It, it, it's really one of the weirdest tellings of Rumpelstiltskin. Um, okay, we're getting off track. But um, yes, I, I, I completely agree. It's like watching... A short little, maybe Saturday morning little cartoon series that would just it would tell tell the story of fairy like a tales book or a fairy tale that we, that have a meaning behind yeah. them in a way. Yeah, so yeah, that's Reading actually Rainbow a really good analogy. Like the best thing I could think of though that related to how that's yeah. how it looks, which like I said, I loved that. So seeing this kind of brings back those. And and you know childhood it's, happiness memories. <laughs> and it's funny so far. You know we've only seen two episodes as of right now, but the Grim Child and the Hunter's Children were both delivered in different ways. Like, the Grim Child had more... Not really free flow, because this series has definitely got its own style of animation, but there was more moving animation in it, more, f like, uninterrupted dialogue. That Like, Ozpin only really narr narrated the beginning and end, wherein the Hunter's Children, there was some ins instances of like free f free animation, but it but it also was kind of stop motion yeah. in a way. And Ozpin narrated more through that through that episode. Yeah. So th they're doing different styles of animation, but also different styles of telling the story. Where Grim Child, it was pretty much watch 
like a regular television show, yeah, just what's watch it happen. As it happens, and where like a more of a narration, like a, a narration of a like a story. Yeah, like, and so it was almost like a picture show with someone narrating the whole entire thing in a way. The characters did talk a few times in it, but just a different style. And I'm wondering how this one will be. So I think we've talked enough. I think everybody wants to see us react to this. So this is Ruby Fairy Tales Episode 3, The Shallow Sea. So let's get going. Well, I hear water, so the shallow sea. So, Oh, boy. Both parents entertain their children with bedtime stories about... Volume 9, already. <laughs> we are special, they say. We were chosen. But chosen by whom? The god of animals traveled all over Remnant, seeking those who were a little more than human, okay. and invited them to sail to the shallow sea to discover their destiny. Okay, so birth of the fa the creation of the faunus. That's that's already what we're getting from this. Um, okay, this guy looks like the deer thing from. Princess Mononoke. So the, uh, this is the god of animals. So I'm already getting like a Noah's Ark like tale here in a way. All right. You did not fit in where you came from, but I know who you are. This, Leave this the thing is awesome looking. It reminds me of something you'd see in Final Fantasy or something. Your life away and show what you've always been just below the surface. You belong here. You are home. Wow. Some of the people leapt at the chance the god offered. <laughs> Others were more skeptical. Though the sea did not touch you, it has revealed your own shallowness. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So he's pretty so it's pretty much saying um shallow people, you all can just stay off our island. So I'm wondering, okay, already we see this island in the background, this tropical island. Are we tr like I'm not saying this is menagerie because if you remember in the show Blake stated that menagerie was pretty much given to the faunus because the humans just wanted them stuck on their own little island. Yeah. But is the reason behind that is because the birth of the faunus is said to take place on, you know, what looks like an island. That's could there possible. be that some... could be a connection. But mm. I I love this whole story here of these humans who were special, were more than what they seemed, and this water show. I, 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 I hope you know where I'm getting at this. Like the, yes. the, these the individuals, self of them. Yeah, and that's how the faunus were created, which is pretty a, a very pretty interesting story going here. Now, this the, it's coming back to me now. It's funny because this is this is what happens toward the end of the story. So I'm wondering what. You know the the god of animals pushing the, the the ones that are shallow below the surface. Yeah, as he said. Yeah, even if the water, the shallow water, didn't touch them. Yeah, that happens at the end of the story, I believe. So, I wonder how, what if they're going to tell this differently than it is in the book? Fables often teach lessons, such as the importance of looking beneath the skin. But for Faunus, the story of the shallow sea does something more vital. It reminds them from a young age that their own lives have value. Okay. But Faunus are forced to grow up quickly. As they mature, they learn darker stories in which the truth lies closer to the surface. Oh boy. Many, many years ago, in a faraway land, there was a war between humans and animals. Wow, okay. So, such a cool design. Fight each other. Are you a human? Animal? I am neither and both. So, are, are we to take from this that the animals in Ruby's world used to be able to talk? Or, since it's the god of animals, 
they can understand the animals. I think well, it kind of would make sense for that because he said, "I am, I am neither yet. I am both." Mm-hmm. So okay, yeah, that does <clears throat> make sense. Why are you fighting? They, they are, are not, not like, like us. us. Why must everyone be the same? We, we worry about, about what, what they, they might, might do, do to us. us. So you have something in common, after all. Who? Judge not what you fear others may do, but by their actions. We've seen the evil in their hearts. Humans are even more capable of destroying things than they are at creating. Animals are stronger than us, but they will not join us in fighting the Grim. You tried to control us. Why should we risk our lives to protect yours? The Grim have never bothered us. All we want is to be free. You are too wild. You must be tamed so you won't steal from us. All we want is to live in safety and in peace. You assume the worst about one another, but you are more alike than you know. If only you could see your best qualities as I do and embrace your differences. I can end this conflict here, but only if all submit to my judgment, whatever it may be. Okay, that's where you get a little... Okay, when it comes to deities and that kind of language, it's like... Ooh. Uh, <laughs> it's like, you know, only if you... you know, Okay, yeah. So... This little tale that's being told between the animals and humans, it's, it's your classic tale whenever you have a story of humans versus something else. Like, you know... <clears throat> the humans try to control us. They, you know, they, and the humans are like, you know, we just want to be safe and all that. But there's always a common thread, it seems like, in these kind of stories where the humans may have not the worst intentions, but it's the way they go about it. Yeah. And also the fact that I'm, I'm, this is, it's a panther, right? I think so. Um, he states that the Grimm have never bothered us. So the Grimm don't go after animals, which is kind of funny because you would, we all want to, we all believe that animals have emotions because they're capable of showing affection. They're capable of showing sadness. They're capable of showing anger, being happy. Um, so that's still emotions. So I wonder why... <clears throat> The Grim wouldn't be be concerned about the emotions of animals, but they are for humans. Humans show negative emotions. I know, but could does that mean? Could, but I mean, these animals definitely have are showing some negative emotions. Well, toward yes, but them. I mean, like maybe by nature the, they're not negative. I think yeah, it's by by nature. An animal is, you know, they don't have hatred. They don't have like like we do. Humans cause, you know, <clears throat> chaos, destruction, and all the negative and fear and all stuff that generated off of a human. Animals don't, they're not made with that. Yes, they have those emotions, but they're not projected like a human would. Yeah, because technically most animals are innocent by nature, so... Um... And fear is usually only... Fear and anger only come out of an animal, usually when it's inflicted... Most of the time, by a human or something else bigger. Yeah. Now, I don't remember this part in the book, so I think this is all new, like, stuff added to it. This might be the translation in between the stories. So, I I think I've already got a feeling what's going to happen here. So, is this a little... Is this kind of manipulative on the God of Animals part? Because, I don't know. (laughs) Like, it's... The way Ru- like the way Kruby portrays deities in the Ruby universe, it's like they're not a hundred percent I don't I don't want to say good, but I don't know. Like the God of Light and the God of Darkness were definitely manipulative in some ways. Like a lot of people have pointed that out how they were. And this one, I don't know, like I'm, I think I know what's going to happen, and let's see if it happens. We accept, we accept your, your judgment. judgment. The fog! The fog! Oh, 
Holy crap. I like her design. I thought the god would choose the superior species. <laughs> Perhaps they have. Were you human or animal before? It doesn't matter anymore. I can see so far. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> The god of animals turned them into fauna, so they don't seem too bothered by it, but is there a way that you could see this as... I don't know. Like, I'm sure there's going to be some who are going to be like, you know, the that god of animals manipulated them in a way. You but know? what he did was, is like, because he pointed out that they all, they both have the same... They both have the same concerns and things in common, and... What he did was he just combined both those things that would make them work together. So I mean, I, I mean I can't find the other words to that I want to describe that with. But okay, so I just thought of something. One was a panther, the other one was I guess a cat. Yeah. Are are those two Blake's ancestors? Maybe. <laughs> That'd be something, wouldn't it? Well, think about it. It could be possible because of the what. Yeah, because Callie, because Cal, yeah, and plus Callie is a cat, and I'm pretty sure Gira is a panther, so that would make Blake both part cat and panther. I'm guessing That's, they're both. Well, they're both cats. I know, but my point is, Gira is more of a big wild cat where I mean we don't really know what kind of cat Callie could be based on it could be as simple as a house cat you know the the, the domesticated cat um so I don't know I guess I've always kind of wanted Blake to be kind of a mix of her mother and of her, her I mom think, and dad well it would make sense but no I but think... she doesn't have fa she doesn't have fangs she doesn't have claws like Gira so maybe she takes more after Callie I think, well, the thing is, is what you pointed out with this, it's highly possible, like I said, look at how high Gira and Callie stand within the faunus. Yeah. But so also... that could be bloodlines where they, he, they were that... Also, the one thing, though, that she might take a little bit from her father is her ears, because her ears are not as big... As Callie's, and yes, I know cats grow into their ears as they get older. Her ears have gotten bigger, but hers aren't as tall. Hers are wider. So could you say, well, I don't know, because panther ears are not pointed. They're, aren't they? She has she has the points of Callie's ears, but the width of a panther's ears. Because okay. panther's ears are rounded and wider. Yeah, and, and don't they, they fold? No, no, they don't. Mm -mm, those can... are, no. That's it's been so cat, long. But... It's been so long since I've looked at a picture of a panther. But anyway, let's continue. <laughs> It seems we are neither human nor animals now. Then what are we? Better than both. Oh no, the Grim. And it seems we now have a common enemy. <laughs> I, j I, I just got changed. I'm going to die by Grim. Wow. But we live here. Don't you know us? We don't even know what you are. Oh boy. Were we so narrow-minded when we were human? Yes. And so the Faunus left in search of a place they could live peacefully together, where they could become the best versions of themselves. These um. fables may seem fantastic, yet they reflect the real and unfortunate history of conflicts between humans and Faunus. And though different versions of the same story, they have some things in common. Faunus leaving behind their old lives to create a new future for themselves, as well as the notion that humans and Faunus need each other to survive. If we all set aside our differences and work toward a shared purpose, how much better would Remnant be for everyone? A lot better. Yeah. It's the same thing in real life. Um, okay, so this one kind of had... A a mix of the first two, the the free flow animation, but also some some uh, narration bits. Um, 
very interesting because, like I said, it was very different from the story uh, that was told in the book. But um, it, it's still the story we know, you know, the, the separation of humans and faunas. Um, even though we've seen many times in Ruby that the you know there there should be nothing that uh, should keep the faunus and the humans working together because we've we've seen human and faunus work together, um, and in the case of Blake and Yang, we see a human and a faunus falling in love with each other. Um, There's just still humans that are in that the well, old ways and mentality to keep hating them, but they may have also been brought up that way to well, hate something that's different. Well, the end of the book, the end, the end of the story in the book pointed out that, you know, the the humans who didn't get off, off the ship, who were shallow and all that, um, they would live the rest of, of their lives dealing with that, but also knowing that, how did it go? I don't want to misquote it. Uh, let's, go, let's go to... I don't want to misquote it because it actually makes a really good point, and I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, here it is. Um, and the descendants of the humans who turned away from our God's great gift have always carried envy in their hearts. To this day, they resent us for reminding them of what they are not and what they never can be. So it kind of goes on the theme that you, at the at their core, most humans are envious of the strengths that the faunus have. You know, uh, whether it be with Blake, you know, the ability to, to uh, see in the dark and stuff like that. Some of them, you know, can fly. Some of them can swim faster, breathe underwater. Um, stronger. Stronger. You've got Ilya, who can, who is pretty, has the best camouflage in the world. Um, so, yeah, that kind of does fit. And it makes you wonder if the White Fang had ever really gotten into a united front, if they could have easily um, won against humanity. But I still don't think we know. Humanity may have a larger population. Who knows? Um but yeah. And you also have some faunus that, you know, they just see how, you know, humans treat them, so they've learned to just hate them because of them, how they're how they're treated towards them. Yeah. So it's both sides and it's it's well the purpose of the white fang was to be, you know, make everybody equal, but yeah. obviously that's taken yeah. other turns before it gets back in any path. <laughs> so yeah, I really like the message of this one, you know if only they would unite, how much better off would Remnant be? And I think by the time Ruby ends, we may be there. Who knows? Um, I'm sure there'll be some who will look at some parts of this and think that some things were questionable. But, you know, kind of like, you know, the God kind of being like, you know, I can end this if you... Not really worship me, but you you know whatever. Trust I, the judgment that yeah, I've made. Yeah, and uh, so some will be like, you know, did they really have a choice? You know, in some ways, but it also kind of reminded me of parts of uh, Korra. You know, the the animosity between spirits and the human world. So you know, uh, but that's a plot line that's universal. You, you can use it in almost any kind of plot you you could think of. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I think I. I still think the Grim Child's my favorite, but it's because it was horror based and it actually jump scared me. This is definitely my second favorite so far. I like this one a little bit better. I like the story of this one. Plus, I love the faunus. You, you do too, of course. And um, so, yeah. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the subscribe button. We just got to 500 subscribers, so thank you all once again for helping us reach that. Now, let's start the long road to a 1,000 subscribers. Please hit that like button as it really helps the channel out. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you thought about this episode. As always, guys, this is Kanan. This is Jesse. We love you all very, very much. Stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves, and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.